All right, as we come back on a Monday, I always like to check our course outline. So if I open that up, I can always just look at my printout. Right. We are getting further into October, and we are getting closer to our midterm. So today, we're just working on assignment three. We're going to learn about timing on the stage. We might even learn some animating on the stage. We're, I'm going to demo it this morning all in Photoshop, and then this afternoon all in uh, PhotoP and GIFMaker.me. And once we're happy with our full animation, we'll output it as a GIF, a graphic interchange format, and post that to Canvas. And then we can create our refined storyboard. So remember, there are three deliverables for this assignment. Your rough storyboard sketch, which you can post right now. Your GIF animation, which will automatically animate within Canvas in any web browser. And your refined storyboard, which is like a print version of your storytelling. So even if you have 100 or more frames, we're going to simplify that to nine frames that tell the story. And your rough storyboard sketch can help with that. So if we look at the videos we've done so far, right? a lot of it was setting up our assets and then starting a stage file to move our frames to. So I need to find those files in my assignment 3 folder. And I have my assets right here. I'm going to open up the PSD for my assets file. And we want to open up both of them. Right? So I have that open. Now I also am going to open up my stage file. And I'm going to have them side by side. So I have assets here, stage here. This is one trick to help you distinguish them. You can put guides around your assets file. I actually recommend you do that. You do that with just your move tool and your rulers, and you just drag guides down right, and snap to the edges. But then my stage file, I don't have any of those. I'm also going to look at this timeline that I have. The timeline is only filled up on the stage. Notice how it's empty on the assets file. And I only have a timeline when I want to play through an animation test. So the other thing I recommend you have open, or just open in front of you in your sketchbook, is your rough storyboard. So I'm just going to open that up and preview not in Photoshop, and just have it open to the side so I can refer to it, because I'm still working through my storytelling. And this will keep me from getting sidetracked or, or stuck on something that's not so important. All right, so I've set my default timing on all of these finished frames in the stage. I have 13 frames so far. Actually, it looks like, yeah, 13. So I'm going to play it through. I can see that the clouds move across, and then my little creature drops down and through. And I want you to notice the difference, right? The clouds are moving, and they're moving at 0.3 seconds per frame. So that's basically three frames per second. But then when my creature drops, that's at five frames per second, 0.2. And so the creature dropping is going to be a little bit faster. I also have that little disruption in my secondary background. You'll see it kind of shake a little bit. And it looks weird and like a mistake this first time. But as that repeats each time something gets hit, it just becomes part of the visual language of the storytelling, kind of the cartoon physics, right? That when this creature hits, like everything shakes a little bit. So if that animation test is working, that was really to figure out the timing. Let me show you how I could try out something else. Well, I still have these timelines outputted. I could try it for 0.1 second. That would be 10 frames per second. And now it's going to seem like it's really fast, that creature dropping down. And I have to decide, do I think that's more effective or less effective? I actually kind of like that more because it comes as more of a shock. Right? But I can also split the difference. So you can go up to two decimal points here. So if I select them both and I say other, I can put in 
0.15, which is halfway between 0.1 and 0.2. So this is kind of the fine tuning of your, your timing. And if I wanted to make it even more dramatic, I could make these first few frames longer. Maybe not just uh, two frames per second, like 0.5, but maybe 0.35. Now here's the problem with really fine tuning your timing while you're still doing animation tests, is you're probably not gonna remember all of these kind of settings, but you see how slowly the clouds start to move now? And of course that, that tower is just appearing and in, in, it's a jump cut over these 13 frames. But let's say this is the timing I was interested in. So what I'm going to do is make a targeted screen grab, command shift four, of these timing selections for my first 13 frames. And that will be a nice reference when I have my finished animation and then I'm really setting all my final timings. But this gives me a good setup. I've basically worked through the first four frames of my rough storyboard sketch, right? I've established the setting, my character comes in, knocks out this tower, and then I have a new setting that gets established. But so important for my animation is understanding that contrast in, in how it feels timing-wise for the clouds to move and then this character just come down unexpectedly and get your attention. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to save that storyboard, or that screenshot rather, not storyboard. And I'm going to put it into my folder. Into my assignment three folder. Here it is. So I'm going to call this a timing test. So this is something I liked. Now the reason I needed to take a screen grab of it is because before I can add any more to my stage, before I can take any more film frames, I need to move all of these frames from the timeline, select them all with shift, and move them to the trash. If I don't do that, when I add a new layer, a new frame on, it's going to add that frame to every one of my timeline outputs. And I don't want that. That would just be a lot more work to try to clean up. So just clean out your timeline. And then I'm going to go to Window and Uncheck Timeline. Then I'm going to hit Command-0 so I can see it full screen. I'm going to hit Command-0 on my assets. And now I am ready to set up my next frame. So this is frame 13 or layer 13. You can see it all set up here. So what happens after I establish this new setting right here? Well, then I have my character come again and smash. Let's see the cake pops. Now, before I immediately go to that, right? Because I just had that character come in. Oh, actually, no, I did set up some, some clouds here. Good, okay. So I've already given some space before my next character introduction moment, right? So this is how I animated the character last time, coming in like that and then like that. This time I want some variety. So I'm gonna show the character a slightly different size. So let's see, there is my hero reference. So I'm going to duplicate it. Let's mark it a different name. This is all about organization or a different color. This will be red for the cake pops. Then I'm going to take that duplicate and I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to grow it. So Command T, grow it a little bit bigger. Maybe even warp it a tiny bit. 
or distort it, I'll distort. Even though it's going by really fast, I want the body posture to be slightly different. I could puppet warp it. To remind you about puppet warp, which is really helpful for character animation, I do edit, puppet warp, gives me a wire mesh. I pin where I want it to stay independent, basically at the joints, and then I can move it at those joints and you see how those feet will stay. And then I can move it at those joints. Maybe I want to angle this wing a little, make it more aerodynamic, like he's flying. All right, so now this is my red character asset. I can turn off the green one. And I want it to show that way first. And I want to play with the clouds a little bit. So I'm going to move them. Whoops. Need to take this out of that layer. There we go. So now I can move the clouds just a little and play with their opacity. I'm going to fade them out just a little bit. Good. Okay, now that's my next frame. So this is now the animation workflow. I'm going to save it Command S because I just built new assets. All I did was build this one, but it's a new asset. And I moved my clouds a little bit. So now what do I do? I go to my topmost visible layer and I hold down Option. Holding down Option is important so that it's non-destructive. When I merge and I go to Layer, Merge Visible. By holding down Option and doing Layer Merge Visible, it gives me a combined layer at the very top. I hit Command A or Select All to select it all. I can go to Edit Copy or Command C to copy it all onto the clipboard. And then I click on my stage and then I go to Edit Paste or Command V to paste it all in. And now I see the clouds have moved and my creature is now dropping above the cake pops. Okay, next, I go back to my assets and I hit Command D to deselect because if I don't hit deselect and then I try to delete this layer, it will just empty out the layer. And then I'll have a lot of empty layers that are really frustrating. So I hit Command D and then I can delete that whole merged layer. And now I'm ready to build my next frame. So I'm gonna duplicate my hero asset guy and I'm going to move him down holding down shift pretty far all the way down to here right and now I'm going to take those cake pops which are here I'm going to mark them red because they move with this character and I'm going to move them down the same amount so it's like he's hitting them and then just like I did before with my little action lines, I'm now going to simply duplicate those. I'll mark them as yellow again. And now I'll just move those to here and maybe make them a little bit bigger. You have control of all the pixels, right? And now I'm going to flip them vertically so they look a little different. And again, that's really subtle, but as these things happen over and over, that's going to work well. The other reason I like to have assets next to stage is I can always go back and remind myself, okay, wait a minute, what did I do with that background? When did it shake? So it looks like it didn't shake here. When they made contact, it, sh it shook right after, like an aftershock. So that, you see that difference? So I'm going to play with that, not in this frame, but in the next frame. All right, so now I've got my next frame set up, but you know what I didn't do? I didn't move the clouds, so I need to move the clouds. So you start thinking through, you know, all these kind of steps. 